is one of my favourite activities in the summer is to have a barbecue. And today, we're having my favourite, sausages. But remember, a barbecue in the garden can also be full of potential danger. Don't stay out in the sun too long or you could get burned. Not a worry for me, Chris. I never use anything less than Factor 30. All right, well, be careful when you're playing ball games where you could hit someone on the head. Not if you only use it for air guitar. Well, in that case, we can get on and enjoy the barbecue. Zond, food's ready, sausages and piping hot beans. Ah, my leg! The piping hot beans have burnt my leg! Injury alert. What should you do if someone is badly burned? A. Never eat anything hot ever again. B. Cool the burn with cold running water for at least 10 minutes, then cover it with cling film and call 999. Or C. Shout out, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Well, the correct answer is B. Cool the burn with cold running water for at least 10 minutes, then cover it with cling film and call 999. Let's see if this lot get it right. They've not had any advice, so they're winging it. Go. Nicholas and Rohanna are both pretending that they've been badly burned. Quick, everyone, they need your help. OK, let's go. They've used alcohol gel, which would be very painful if you had a burn. They're putting on a gauze bandage right onto the burn. Not a good idea on a severe burn. You have to take a picture. So they've thought of using the phone, but unfortunately they've used the phone to take a selfie. <laughs> Time to show you how it should be done. Ah! Ow! It hurts! I burn myself! Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. Don't worry, Zand, it's all going to be fine. We pour cold running water over it for 10 minutes using a hose like this. That is the most important thing you can do because it reduces the temperature and it reduces scarring. So we do need to get Zahn to hospital. And a good way of doing that is by calling 999. After 10 minutes of cold water, we then want to put cling film on and put it on the burn like that. So when you get a bad burn, you lose the top layer of skin. And that means you're at risk of infection. And so cling film acts like temporary skin. Well, thanks, Chris. My burn's feeling better already. Right, who's ready to have another go? Yes! So if you see someone who's badly burned, you must. Use cold running water to cool the burn for 10 minutes. Cover the burn in cling film or a clean plastic bag to reduce pain and keep it clean. Call 999 and continue to put cold water on top of the cling film until paramedics arrive. How's the legs, on? Oh, it's much better, thanks. Good, good. Uh, what are you doing with these sausages? Well, I've eaten mine. They were delicious, by the way. But I'm afraid yours got rather badly burnt, so I've poured cold water on them for 10 minutes and then I wrapped them in cling film. <sighs> on a nice day like this, Sand and I like nothing more than going for a run. We do! We do! But running in a park like this can be dangerous. I don't think so, Chris. You could trip on uneven ground and sprain an ankle. Not me, Chris. I always keep my eyes on the ground ahead of me. Well, you could be so busy looking at the ground that you run into someone else and injure them. I don't think so, Chris. I'm very observant. Well, with a running style like Zond's, you could easily hit yourself in the face with your own arm. Everything all right, Zond? Oh, yes, everything's fine. There's a big group of people over there, though. Yeah, it looks like there's someone on the ground having difficulty breathing. Do you think they're having an asthma attack? Well, I don't know, but there's lots of people around, so we probably don't need to bother going over to check. Or do we? Injury alert! Come on, Zand. <laughs> what should you do if someone is having an asthma attack? A. Copy them so they don't feel alone. B. Help them to sit comfortably and take their inhaler. Or C, use the time to practice your violin. The music might relax them. Or not. The correct answer is B. Help them to sit comfortably and take their inhaler. Let's see if this lot get it right. They've not had any advice, so they're winging it. Are you ready to try and help? Yeah! Off you go! Esme and Isaac are both pretending that they're having an asthma attack. Anyone with asthma should have their inhaler and spacer nearby. Will the team spot them among these random items? I've got the inhaler out. 
This would not be very relaxing. She's standing up, she's really crowded. They do seem to be getting him to blow up balloons, which is really the last thing you'd want to do if you're having an asthma attack. Looks more like they're planning a birthday party now. Our teams didn't quite get this right. They did have some good ideas. I'm going to call 999. And also some dodgy ones. Time to show you how it should be done. Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. So Chris is having an asthma attack. So the first thing I want to do is get him sat down so he's a bit more relaxed. Go on, have a seat. That's good. And try and breathe a bit more slowly if you can. You're doing a good job. And he's got his asthma inhaler with him and his spacer device. Put it against your face. A couple of puffs in there. And then big, deep, slow breaths. That's good. And then what I want you to do, Chris, is see if you can slow your breathing down. How are you feeling, Chris? I'm feeling better. Thanks, Sand. Right, so the important things are sit them down and get them relaxed. Get them their inhaler and give them a couple of puffs. Get them to slow their breathing down and calm them down. And if they're not getting better or they're getting worse, call an ambulance. You got that? Yes. Are you ready to give it another go? Yes! Brilliant. Off you go. So, if you see someone who's having an asthma attack, you should get the person to sit comfortably, find their inhaler and help them to take it. And if the inhaler doesn't help, get an adult and call 999. Esme. How do you think they did? Good. You know, Chris, it's really good to see they've got everything under control, but I am very pleased we went to check. That's right. You should never assume that everything is in hand. They might have needed our help. Right. Well, I'd say the last one to the ice cream van has to buy all the ice cream. Son, son, I didn't say go! Chris? Chris? Uh-oh, Dr. Chris has collapsed and he's not responding. Injury alert! So what should you do if someone is unresponsive and not breathing? A, take a selfie with them while they can't refuse. B, lie down next to them and have a little nap. Or C, call 999, find an adult and tell them how to do chest compressions and then get an AED or defibrillator. The correct answer is C. Call 999, find an adult and tell them how to do chest compressions and then get an AED or defibrillator. But will this lot get it right with no training? Are you ready? Yeah! Off you go. go! AJ and Hanitha are both pretending that they've had an accident and are unresponsive and not breathing. Quick, guys, they need your help. OK, you got a phone? No, no, no. You need to come to this. Location straight away. Or well, calling an ambulance is a great start. I can't feel it. Start the compressions. One. They've got two. into doing chest compressions, but actually they're just squishing his stomach. They're not doing them in the right place at all. Our teams didn't quite get this right. Some ideas were spot on, like Farouk's. I searched to see if she had a phone on her so we could call the ambulance. Others just missed the mark. Tell me about the chest compressions. I don't think I did it to, next to his chest. I was doing it near his stomach. Let's show you how it should be done, with the help of Jeff, our first aid dummy. Right, can you see if he's responsive? Jeff? Remember, we're Jeff. showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. I'm shaking him gently, but he's not saying anything. What should I do next? Can you check if he's breathing? Yep. Put your ear down next to his mouth, tilt his head back, can you feel any breaths at all on your ear? No, I can't feel any and I can't hear anything. We need to call 999. OK, I've got a phone here. So you call 999, give the patient's problem, give your location, and the ambulance service will tell you to start doing chest compressions. Put the heel of your hand in the middle of his chest and start pushing down at that speed twice every second. To do chest compressions, you need a grown-up because it's hard work and requires the stronger power of an adult for it to be effective. So Chris is now doing chest compressions. I need to go and find an AED or defibrillator. An AED or automated external defibrillator can be spotted in schools and public places like sports centers. Now, all AEDs have instructions on them. It's a machine which delivers an electric shock to the heart. Pull green tab to remove pads. There are the pads. Peel pads from liner. Press pads firmly to patient's bare skin. OK, and now you need to move back, cos I'm going to give a shock. Can you stand back? 
Jeff isn't responding because he's a dummy. But at the touch of a button, the defibrillator tries to give the heart a kickstart. This machine will talk you through everything you need to do, so the most important thing is to stay calm and listen to the instructions. Do you want to have a go? Yeah! Brilliant. So, if you see someone who's unresponsive and not breathing, call 999, remember you'll need to know your location, then tell an adult how to do chest compressions, and finally, if available, find a defibrillator and follow its voice prompts. Good work, guys. Chris, are you breathing? Oh, yes, I am. I just winded myself. You winded yourself? Is that it? Well, yes, but it was quite a shock at the time. I thought it was some kind of emergency. Well, it's always better to check. I wonder if we should play something else. I've got this basketball with me. OK, all right, ready? One, two, three. Ooh. Wind it again. Today is a very exciting day for me and Dr Zahn because we're having our birthday party! <laughs> and as you can see, having a birthday party can be dangerous. <laughs> you could burn yourself while you're baking the cake. Not if you wear oven gloves or you buy it from the shop. Well, you could poke someone in the eye with the end of your party hat. Not if you're as careful as I am. <laughs> or you could slip on the freshly washed floor whilst practising your dance moves. <laughs> right, Zahn, come on, we've got to lay out the food for the guests. Ooh, don't mind if I do. And remember, don't eat anything from the bowl on the left. It's got peanuts in it and you can't eat. Peanuts! Zon! This could cause a severe allergic reaction. Injury alert! <laughs> now, what should you do if someone was having a serious allergic reaction? A. Help them use their EpiPen or auto-injector pen and call 999. B. Sing them a lullaby to help them feel calm. Or C. Film them and put it on the internet. It might go viral. The correct answer is A. Help them use their EpiPen or auto-injector pen and call 999. Let's see if this lot get it right without any help from us. Right, off you go! Ruby and Jesse are both pretending that they're having an allergic reaction. Quick, they need your help. Are you right? Are you right? Both teams get straight to work. I know, I to that. Have you eaten? What happened to the peanuts? Wait. Quite rushed and quite panicked initially. I found this! What? They managed to find the auto-injector pen but they're stumbling a little bit with reading instructions properly. Our teams didn't quite get this right. They had some good ideas. Nine, nine, nine. But also a few dodgy ones. Did you follow the instructions? Let's be on the leg. Oh, yeah. Right, let's go and find out the correct way to deal with a severe allergic reaction. Come on. Remember, this is what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. We're showing you what to do using a dummy injector pen. So let's say I'm having an allergic reaction. Chris, my lips are swelling, my tongue's swelling, I'm feeling itchy in my mouth. I'm actually finding it quite hard to breathe now, and I just feel terrible. I've got your auto-injector pen here, so I'd read the instructions. Pull off blue safety cap, hold device 10 centimetres from the outer thigh, swing and jab orange tip firmly against outer thigh and listen for the click and hold in place for 10 seconds. So that's Zahn's outer thigh, so that's about 10 centimetres. One, two, nine, ten. And then we come out and then it says massage area for 10 seconds. Different pens have different sets of instructions, so always read the instructions carefully. Once you've given the medicine, you must then call 999. Right, who wants to try it again? Me! Come on, then. Are you OK? So, if you see someone with a rash, itchiness, swelling on their face or having difficulties breathing, then it might be a severe allergic reaction and you must... Find their auto-injector pen and help them to use it following the instructions. Call 999. Hello. Ambulance. And remember to find out your location. Reassure the patient until the paramedics arrive. And if they don't have an auto-injector pen, call 999 immediately. Really good job, everyone. Zot, are you OK? Is your tongue itchy? Is your throat swelling up? I can get your auto-injector pen. I don't need my auto-injector pen. Yeah, you do. Don't be silly. I didn't eat any peanuts. Just been eating these sweets. Although, I see what you mean. They do look a bit similar. Well, that is a relief. 
but it's always better to check if someone needs your help. And if you have a friend or a twin brother with a severe nut allergy, it's better not to serve any nuts at all. Every year, Zond gets very excited about his role in our local play, and this year he's playing the part of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. Why are you dressed as a witch? <laughs> anyway, every play can be full of danger! <laughs> if you don't have your evil fake teeth properly fitted, you could choke on them. Evil teeth? But these are my real teeth! <laughs> if your costume's too long, you could trip on it and bang your head. And no, my dress is tailor-made to my exact specifications. And you should always take regular breaks from practising your lines because you wouldn't want to lose your voice before the big day. <laughs> OK, I think it is time you took a break, Zand. Oh, what a shame! We're just about to get to my favourite bit with the poisoned apples. Ooh, apples. I love apples. Wait, are these the poisoned apples? Yes! Oh, no! Help me quickly! Injury alert! So what should you do if you think someone has swallowed something poisonous? A. Give them a cup of tea. That makes everything OK. B. Find out what they've swallowed, when and how much. Then call 999 and keep them calm. Or C. Turn them upside down and see if you can drain the poison out. The answer is B. Find out what they've swallowed, when and how much. Then call 999 and keep them calm. Let's see what this lot do without any advice at all. Are you ready? Yeah! Off we go. Mirabelle and Abid are both pretending that they've swallowed something poisonous. Quick, guys, they need your help. What's wrong? She can't speak. Both teams get straight to work. What happened? Drink some water. Did not seem to react very well to the water. She's choking. She looks like she's very ill. We're calling 999. So they were correct to call 999 quite quickly, but they still haven't figured out what Mirabelle has eaten. And there's lots of poisonous stuff on that table. Good point, Chris. This lot didn't do quite the right thing in this situation. I think we should have picked it up quicker that the water was making it worse. That's right, Coria. Now it's time to show you how it should be done. Oh, oh! Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. Oh, my tummy! Oh, my You're right, tummy. Chris. Oh no, I feel really sick. My tummy hurts. I feel really ill. Okay, have a seat. Hey, have you eaten any of this? Yeah, I did. I ate one of these. I thought it was a sweet. This is a dishwasher tablet, Chris. This could be quite poisonous. Ooh. When did you eat it? About 20 minutes ago. So I'm going to call the ambulance and get you some help, OK? Thanks, Sand. I need an ambulance. I've got a guy here who's eaten one dishwasher tablet. He ate it about 20 minutes ago. Can I have some water? No, they say you shouldn't have any water. Should I make myself vomit? No, they say don't make yourself vomit. Just sit and stay calm and the ambulance is on its way. Are you all ready to have another go at it? Yeah! So, if you see someone who's swallowed something poisonous, you must... Find out what they've had, when and how much... What did you take? Call 999 and keep them calm. Don't panic. Remember, this is an exercise. You should never play with poisonous substances. That is fantastic. They've done it all correctly. Quick, Zond, use my phone to call 999. What on earth for? Because I've eaten one of the poisoned apples. Those aren't poisoned apples. They're nice, normal apples that I'm using as props. Oh. Well, why didn't you just say so? Plays aren't dangerous. Now, I'm going over here to rehearse. Ah! 